everybody. We're back. This is Lilacs on a Rune. I'm Stelios. Yeah, you are. Yeah. So, um, uh, we are doing some talking about the SCA and uh, the group that you told me about, the the Dreamers. The SCA Dreammakers. Dreammakers. These are a valiant group of people who have decided to get together and talk about some very, very difficult issues. Yeah. They're tra- they're doing some think tank stuff there. Yeah, they're doing some think tank stuff. And well, you know, me being the the self proclaimed king of controversy. Oh you. Blessed with the gift of gab. Oh you. I figured, you know, I'd put my money where my mouth is yeah. and recruit my lovely lady and we decided we we're gonna talk to y'all directly. Yeah. And so we wanted to talk throughout a, probably a series of videos here about some of the things we think relate to that. And we wanted to talk to you guys about one of the issues I know SCA has, which is that new membership rates are pretty low. So why don't new people join the SCA? Like you'll see people swing by a demo or pop by an event or two and then you never see them again. What's up with that? What's up with that? What's up with that? Well, people don't join because it's, well, the SCA is expensive. There's a lot of overhead going into SCA, and there's this whole thing about, oh, well, it's for any budget. No. No. No, it's not. No. No, it's not. No. Yeah, yeah, you can do your first couple events in a mundane ground pimple wearing black blue jeans and an old t-shirt you flipped over and wrapped a belt around, but ain't no one's going to talk to you if you dress like that. Uh, it's, it's true, because, I mean, let's, let's be real, you know, when you are dressed that way and somebody can look at you and obviously tell that you are new, it comes with an air of unworthiness. Oh, God, yes. Like, and Me. I don't know if people intend to do it. I'm not going to sit out here and throw accusations, but when you see somebody who is obviously new, you might see the person wearing a costume shop dress Mm -hmm. for garb. You know, people will walk by this person. And scoff. Yeah. Sneer. Nose in the air. And, you know, that that doesn't do anything to help bolster numbers. Because that person clearly already feels like an outsider in the first place. Because this is their first event. You know? They don't know anybody here. Or they might know a handful of people here. But they, they know full and well they are an outsider. Yeah, nothing makes you want to stay more... Nothing makes you want to stay less than basically being told your best effort's not good enough. Yeah. And there's a lot of high expectations with... The, like, there's always the ideal perfect period encampment and stuff. And that's all cool. And that is cool, but... People feel like they're not going to get anywhere unless they do that. And that's expensive, that's time-consuming, and it's intimidating. It is. It's very intimidating. You know? You know, I I understand that the SCA wants to put off this air of being welcoming and inviting to people of all levels, but when you walk by those super period camps, do you see those new people? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm-mm. 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 You see those new people in their ground pimples pushed all the way to the edge of the world mm-hmm. in their own little commune. Mm-hmm. They're up there in Camp Cramalot. Yeah, Camp Cramalot. I That was actually a really good story. Yeah, I'll tell that some other time. But um, they're out, they're out there. And yeah, they're making friends with other people like them. But when they see the quote, cool kids, end quote, and the cool kids won't give them the time of day, you really think that's going to encourage them to come back? Hell no. I don't think so. I sure Mm -hmm. as shit wouldn't. And you know, that that kind of standoffishness feeds right into it with the, oh, those stories of social etiquette, that you're supposed to milady this, milord, that, grace this, grace that, highness, bow, curtsy, stand on your head, do a backflip, like, what? Come on. But well, a, you all running around in a hayfield in a bunch of outdated fashion. No one's going to lose their shit and throw you in the dungeon if you don't curtsy when someone with a coronet rocks by. 
Like, that ain't gonna happen. But then they feed you this thing like it is. Yeah. And it's that it's less the, the actual repercussion and the more the the withdrawal of social approval threat attached to that. Yeah. And, and you don't get to be part of the tribe if you don't jump through all these social hoops that we tell you to. And while I understand people want to teach medieval etiquette and stuff like that, I would ask that you be patient with new people. Mm-hmm. Be patient. You know, and don't, don't like, rah, 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 you're supposed to say this, you're supposed to do that. Rah. Don't hardball it like they have to. Throw it out like the, so in period, this is what people would do. Right. You know. You don't have to. I mean, so what? I mean, we fuck up a lot of teachable moments. You know, my knees hurt. I ain't jumping up because some chick's walking by with a big fancy pointy hat. Like, that's great for her, but she's not even going to look at me. I'm not standing. Yeah, you know, she can get a nod and, yeah. Yeah. I got bad knees. Thanks, Uncle Sam. I can't kneel very long. But that's that's besides the point. What I'm saying is, you know, a lot of the time we miss teachable moments because we're too caught up in wanting to discipline somebody for their lack of formality. Yeah, so people are so focused on their own immersion that they end up being ex. Uh, they end up accidentally excluding the new kids. Yeah. And so, I, I don't think a lot of it's intentional. Some no. Of it, some of it is. Some of it is. But I think most of it's just so hyper-focused on their own immersion and their own stuff that they just they end up being unapproachable and it ends up looking really unattainable. It really does. So my advice, our advice to you guys would be in the future... Go, go out of your way, you know, to meet new people. Mm-hmm. I have, and the funny part about that is those people have never forgotten me for it. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, I'm a very unique-looking dude anyway. Yeah. So it's always nice when people tell me, hey, I remember when I first started this and you were one of the first people I met. And I'll throw I'll throw a name out there. The um, one of the first people I met was Bridget Ross, and she is one of the nicest, most welcoming, most kind-hearted people I've ever met. In fact, it was my first event, Enter West War 2010, and. She brought me to her camp. She introduced me to all these people. And when it was all said and done, she gave me a coin, one of her coins. And I still have it. And it's one of my most treasured things. And I said to myself that that was the person I was going to try to emulate every time I came across somebody new. Go help people set up their tent. Go help people haul stuff down to the war field. Go help people do things. Because this is a... It, come on, hauling crap back from the war field is ass, man. Long story short, remember what it was like to be new. Mm-hmm. Never forget that. Mm-hmm. As long as you remember what it's like to be new, then you know what that new person is going through. You know what they fear. You know what they might be embarrassed about. You know the things that they might not know. And you can be a boon to this person, just like people like the Iron Ring Mercenary Company, uh, Myrmidons. Brid- Bridget Ross. I'm going to throw the Myrmidons out. The Myrmidons. Because they have been um, nothing but welcoming and sweet to all the new people I've seen them hanging out with. Yeah. They reach people, reach out to people, they grab them and they drag them in, and then they try and shove them in a chitin. One day, Greece will rule the damn world. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, I mean, come on, remember, this is about spreading the joy and the passion of the hobby, not about feeling like your shit's better than other people's. That's not what this is about, right? Right. Right. So, you know, because when you do act like your shit's better than everyone else's, that bleeds over and it makes people feel unwelcome and it makes people feel like no matter how hard they try, their shit's not good enough. And, you know, that's, that's actually one of the reasons I don't play anymore. I got shoved to the edge of the campfire and a lot of those types of things. But you know what? I think we should talk about that in another video. 
Speaking of things that you might want us to talk about, please feel free to send us messages yes. via Facebook. We like mail. We like mail. And we like you. And we That's want to hear from you. That's why we do this show. We want to hear from you. We'd like to hear about the stuff that you want us to talk about. Because mm -hmm. you might not want to talk about it, but, but we, we will. will. We will. So uh, if you liked this video, go ahead and uh, click on that little like button right down there. And uh, if you really liked it, like, maybe click on that share button. Share with your friends. Let it, let it spread the love. You know? And if you really, 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 really liked, liked it, it, hit that subscribe button. Yep.